All right, hello, and it's Silver Kyle, and today we are going to be taking a look at the X-Men Volume 1 Omnibus. That is what started everything for the X-Men, and not to be confused with the Uncanny X-Men Volume 1 by Claremont that has the giant size X-Men here. This is the 1970s run that starts the Chris Claremont era, and preceding that is what Stan Lee started with the X-Men Volume 1. So... Uh, this is what starts everything, and then they have a volume two afterwards that they are doing a reprint as well of, and then you would continue on and start the X-Men, uh, Uncanny X-Men era. <laughs> X-Men is kind of confusing with the way that they, they have things, uh, but uh, um, Omar from Near Mint Condition does a great job of kind of showing you the actual timeline and how you should read things if you want to read them in the proper order, but just letting you know that this is the th thing that starts everything. This is also an omnibus that when I first started getting into Omnibus, uh, was one of the biggest whales. And a whale in Omnibus terms is an out-of-print Omnibus that is really sought after. And for some reason, I just thought there would be a really long time before we saw this. For one thing, Marvel Comics didn't really uh, have any reason to promote the X-Men because they weren't part of the MCU. So they generally focused on ones that they could promote that were coming out with movies and stuff like that. And the X-Men uh, were owned by... Um, Fox. So uh, they had no reason to kind of promote this kind of stuff. But now, now they are par finally back with uh, Marvel and we can start doing uh, X-Men movies and TV shows, but they just haven't started any of that yet. Hopefully uh, in the next few years, we'll, we'll start seeing some X-Men show up in the MCU, which would be freaking amazing. Maybe even with the Multiverse of Madness with Doctor Strange, we might finally start seeing them. So anyway, let's take a look at what this includes. And also this is the Alex Ross cover. I kind of like the look of Magneto, but I don't really like any of the look of the other characters. I generally don't do, don't like Alex Ross. Once in a while, he surprises me and I end up liking something, but I would have much preferred to have this one, which is what you would get if you went to an actual comic book store or like, I think in stock trades and, and places in the U S that actually let you get these actual covers instead of these standard editions, um, which is this. And I just don't really like this, but anyway, let's take a look at what this includes. And this straight up collects the X-Men 1, 1 to 31. The nice thing about Silver Age books is that it's just straight up issue to issue to issue. Not very confusing at all. Uh, and this retails for $100 in the US, $125 here in Canada. I think I paid $90 uh, for this here in Canada from Indigo.ca. And uh, this is a rather, a rather small omnibus. It's less than 800 pages. But um, you're getting 31 issues and, and for a bit of a lower price. So, Oh, and... <laughs> Let's talk about the glorious spine that they've now started creating, which I absolutely hate. Very small font for the X-Men, just to give you some context here. Like, I'm sorry, but this is so much better. And then same thing, like you can barely see the names. And that's to me just an insult, very small volume one. I, I like this, that's, that's a nice addition, but it would have been nice for them to have done that with all their other books beforehand. And now they're starting to reprint these. So it just, it's all going to be... A horrible nightmare and I just feel like I need to t mention that every time because I just it bothers me so much okay children of the atom are born and information on the creators um the binding here isn't the greatest it's 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 it's, it's okay it's I guess regular Marvel, but not it's not amazing. Oh, and there. So let's take a look. And I think the the original had like the, that actual fake leather um, hardcover, but this doesn't have that. that. This has just the regular X, regular Marvel hardcovers. So we start off here with the creators and the people that were uh, able to make this happen. Table of contents, which we I always love. With the dates and everything. A nice little forward here by Stan Lee. And then we dive into the first issue and they are numbered as well. Beautiful artwork where we actually get to see it make it, it looks like an actual comic as well. Love that. And I, I think that this, it opens up nicely but I did have to stretch it out quite a bit more and the eye doesn't pop out a crazy amount, but I mean, we're, we're 15, 14 pages in and it's 
you know, nicely open. The other nice thing is that because it's a Silver Age, we do have this barrier here, the, the white, that kind of uh, gives us a little bit more room so you can see all the artwork, no problem, right? Never read any of this material. So this will be my first time diving into it. Kind of looking forward to it. I like to read things in chronological order. I just really want to read this so I can get into the Uncanny X-Men stuff. That's the material that I really want to read. Uh, the paper is... It's thick enough, uh, but it isn't super glossy. It's got that weird... I, I, like If you've been watching my channel for a while, I, I talk about how they have this... It's like a gloss, but it feels kind of dirty. It's Dirty is not the word. It's not dirty at all. But it doesn't feel as glossy as a lot of the, the other... Like if I read a... Oh, my book just fell on the side here. Um, it doesn't feel... I don't know, like a DC book feels extremely glossy to me. This doesn't. Um, it's a little bit harsher. Not bad quality, it just doesn't have, doesn't have that glossy feel that you would expect. This is close to the middle here. And obviously because the, this is the beginning of the X-Men, we get a lot of the, the uh, early introductions of a lot of the characters, like the Sentinels, Juggernaut is here, uh, the Blob, Magneto, obviously. Um, maybe some other B characters that I've never heard of. <laughs> Uh, that I'll, I'll get an introduction to, uh, to here. And then, obviously, the, the original team here, which is Professor X, um, um, Cyclops, Jean Grey, uh, Beast, Archangel, and Iceman, I believe. I've never really liked Archangel. I'm curious to see if I'll kind of enjoy his... Well, I don't... Maybe not from the Silver Age stuff. It's, it's not going to be what sells me on him, but... Yeah, I, I very much like Beast much more with... Uh, the blue furry furball that he is later on. Because um, he doesn't really stick out that much, right? He's just like this bigger character that's really smart still, but but has massive feet. He's, he looks so much more aesthetically pleasing as this furball, right? That, that he looks like an actual superhero at that point in time. And we'll just go to near the end because there are a few extras here. Not a lot, but some. So, and because it's Silver Age, we do get the uh, letters that they wrote in that uh, they would include with their comics. We get a little bit more from Stan Lee, John B. Cook, Bruce Canwell. Some images here when they would include them. Uh, like this doesn't feel, that's rough. Not glossy at all here. At least the actual material is a lot glossy. This is like, oh, it's weird. Super unglossy, kind of glossy. Don't know why that happens so often with Marvel books. If anybody knows, that'd be great. Those look cool. Whoa. That's, I like that artwork. And there you go. That is everything. See, this is where I'd rather have, to have the Alex Ross cover. If you really like the Alex Ross artwork, you can check it out here, but not on the front cover here. Uh, and I will just take a quick look at the binding and look at that eye, which isn't very apparent. Like, it's not there, man. <laughs> That's not and i stretched it out quite a bit. I mean, I guess I'm gonna have to stretch it out a little bit more, but I expected a little bit more. Then again, because that's a Silver Age, I didn't feel like, you know, there's no, like, if, if, if the artwork went all the way, there would be massive gutter loss here, but uh, you don't have to worry about it as much. I can still read all the bubbles um, and all the text, so it's not that big of a deal because of that white uh, little bar that we have in between uh, the actual images. So there you go. That is uh, the X-Men Volume 1, which just got a reprint. And uh, I'll be definitely doing uh, Volume 2 when that comes out. Uh, I think it's in next month, February 2022. So thank you all for watching. You have been bearded in. Beardage!